What's the ground of our hope? You know, our hope is grounded on one thing. It's on the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ. You see, if, if Jesus hadn't risen from the dead, all the promises of the Lord would have been in vain because they said he would rise again. But he is risen. He is risen indeed. He is a resurrected Savior. It is the confirmation of every other promise in the Word of God that every promise is yes and amen in Christ Jesus. Amen? Todas las promesas que he hecho dos son sí en Cristo. Amen? Hallelujah. Gloria a Dios. God is promised and it is true and you can build your life on it. Praise the Lord. Confirmation of every promise including our place with him in heaven. Wow. Heaven's going to be an amazing and a wonderful place and the wonder of his, his return. Now this rock is solid ground. You can build your life on the promises of God. Amen? Lord, help us. Come on, it's all held together by his word. Get the song singing on the inside. Get the word of the Lord as a foundation for your life and you're going to build a great future. Don't let anybody talk you down. Don't let any situation put you down. You're more than a conqueror through him who loves you. You've got a song on the inside. You've got the word of the Lord in your mouth. It's like a sword that comes out and destroys the works of the enemy and builds a kingdom that God's already ordained for you to dwell in. Amen? On your, uh, I put a few things on your newsletter there. Uh, some quotes and things. Uh, one of them here, where there is life, there is hope. Where there are hopes, there are dreams. Where there are vivid dreams repeated, they become goals. Goals become the action plans and game plans that winners dwell on in intricate detail, knowing that achievement is almost automatic when the goal becomes an inner commitment. The response to the challenges of life, to our purpose, is that healing balm that enables each of us to face up to adversity and strife. Amen? It's that thing that keeps you going through the tough times. So I've done an H-O-P-E, how to dwell in hope. Here we go. First one for H is heads up. Heads up. Psalm 121. I lift up my eyes to the hills. From where does my help come? My help comes from the Lord who made heaven and earth. So when your eyes are downcast. Lift them up and look again to the Lord. He is, Romans 15 and verse 13, may, may God, the source of hope, yeah, fill you with all joy and peace by means of our faith in Him so that your hope will continue to grow by the power of the Holy Spirit. Hope will grow on the inside of you. So heads up is the start. For the O, open the word. Open the Word. Romans 15 and verse 4. Everything written in the Scriptures was written to teach us in order that we might have hope through the patience and encouragement with the Scriptures give us. Turn to the Word of God. It is secure. It is solid. So that's heads up. Yeah? Open the Word. Proclaim the promises. Romans 10, 8. What does it say? The Word is near you, in your mouth, and in your heart. That is the word of faith which we proclaim. Don't speak the negative, speak the word of God. There is such a temptation to reflect the situation. You know, we, we face the facts. We don't deny the facts. We face them, but we're not going to go around declaring them. We go around declaring the word of the Lord. Yeah? Yeah? So you walk around, your knee's sore. You don't deny the fact you've got a sore knee. I say, thank you, Lord. You're a healing God. I'm going to be healed by your mighty power. You're the same yesterday, today, and forever. You're Jehovah Rapha. I fear you. Therefore, that brings life to my bones and healing to all my flesh. If I think I'm dying, well, with long life, you will satisfy me and show me your salvation. The word of the Lord just needs to come pouring out. Some of you need to get into the word of the Lord. Yeah, you need to know the Scriptures. How many Scriptures do you know about hope? How many Scriptures do you know about faith? Get the Word of the Lord inside of you. We are transformed. Our minds are renewed by the Word of the Lord. Get the Word into you. It's the very thing that will shape your world. It's the thing that renews your mind. It's brainwashing, yeah? We need our brains washed from all the junk that's out there. I freely say it's brainwashing. We need them washed. 
We need our brains to be washed and to be renewed and to aligned with the Word of God because when we speak that Word, it shapes the world that we're going to walk into. Come on, it's the most powerful weapon we have is the Word of the Lord. Get into your Bible. Get the Word of the Lord into you. It's a key to your future. Come on, His Word doesn't return to Him void. It fulfills everything He sent it for, but we need to proclaim it. The Word of faith that's in you, in your heart and in your mouth. Speak it out. It's powerful. It's powerful. It's the word that holds everything together. It's the thing that can bring change. If we really understood the power of the word of God, we'd spend a lot more time in it. Amen? Not just, don't just do your Bible reading. Eat it up. Consume it. Make it a part of you. Confess it during the day. Begin to walk in the word, and you will see what the Lord your God will do. Jesus came as the word made flesh. He's trying to flesh out the word in us. Amen? If we understood this, we would change the way we read our Bibles. In fact, some of us would start reading our Bibles. Amen? Don't, let it, don't use it for pressing flowers or for keeping photos in. Okay? Or just to decorate the shelf so people think you're a good religious person. Although it's not such a good sign these days. Some of you probably hide your Bibles when people come around. Hey, come on. It's the key to life. It's very powerful. So proclaim that word. Heads up. Open the word, proclaim the word, what should we do for E? Amen. Evangelize. No, that's not the one. We're doing expect, but I like evangelize as well. Go James, the evangelist. 1 Peter 1, 3. All honor to God and fa- to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, for it is by his boundless mercy that God has given us the privilege of being born again. Now we live with a wonderful expectation. Yeah? A wonderful expectation because Jesus Christ rose again from the dead. Can we stand together?